You would be surprised at how many people actually send me this video thinking that this is evidence of the rotation of the Earth. It's not. The Earth is stationary. The only thing that moves is the sky. Now, let's explain the trickery. Essentially, all that these tricksters did was take an equatorial mount, which spins on this axis 360 degrees, attach a DSLR to the top with a wide-angle lens, use this keypad to have it follow a specific star, wandering star, or constellation, and essentially all that it did was spin with the movement of the sky, giving the illusion that the Earth is moving and not the sky. But this is just a farce. The sky moves, not the Earth. Every single experiment that has been done in the history of mankind to prove the motion of the Earth has failed, suggesting that the Earth is stationary, fixed, static. <laughs> Have a good day on this level stationary plane, and don't fall for these type of tactics and trickery. If I tell you I'm a flat earther and this is the first thing that pops in your head, you've been deceived. Flat Earth was actually widely believed by many different religions for a lot longer than we thought the Earth was a ball. So who are you going to trust? We all know the story of the Tower of Babel in the Bible, but let me explain to you how it proves Flat Earth. Genesis chapter 11 verse 4 clearly states, And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't see how you could build a tower going up and ever reach anything except, you know, the vacuum of space on this model. But this model makes a whole lot more sense. If you, if you, you could build a tower going straight up and you could eventually meet God and try and overthrow him like they did in the Tower of Babel. The Bible is a manual and a history book for life. Study it, know it, and learn. Have a look at this ball, this transparent ball here with this confetti inside. And this confetti is laying on the ground of the ball, right? They should go uh, one step ahead and look back. You can clearly see that this confetti is on the bottom side of the ball. So one force is pushing all of this confetti to the downside. And this should be impossible in a um, whiteless environment like the ISS. Because when uh, a force is uh, neutralized, then it's impossible for all of those little particles to stay at the bottom of the ball. So one particle would be here, one particle would be there, one particle would be there. Some uh, particles are inside levitating there, but this this, this here, all laying on the ground. It's like they have this uh, <laughs> image taken on Earth because that makes no sense, right? So be skeptical. Have a nice day. There was a comment about book references. I can't find it at the moment, but if you're still coming along and you're still on this journey with us, here they are. I recommend the top three first. My personal pick would be top left, middle, right, but any of those top three are a great start. I will be reading these uh, passages through these top three, at least that I have videos already canned on and uh, was going to do like a little series on them, but you know, time and things are changing. My, we're going down a different path now than we were in the beginning. So uh, yeah, those are my recommendations. What up fam, we're back at it with a fun one that triggers the Globers. This time we're talking about two things, sea cables and southern cruises, or maybe a lack of. So here we got a Mercator map of the Earth and there's a few places where these sea cables don't connect. Check this out. From South America to South Africa, or from South Africa to Australia, or from Australia to South America. These should work perfectly on a globe, but they don't connect and I'll show you why. Because the Earth is not a ball, it's actually flat. For example, South America to South Africa. That would be way further on a flat Earth, or from South Africa to Australia, or from Australia all the way to South America. Look how far that is on a flat Earth. That's why there's no sea cables 
connecting in the south because the south is way bigger on a flat earth. And now the other part talking about cruises, why are there no cruises from South America to Australia or South America to New Zealand? Because like I just showed you, that distance is way too far. So again, South America all the way to New Zealand or Australia. That's why there's no cruises, because the distance is way too far. We don't live on a globe, y'all. So how many coincidences do you guys need to point to a flat Earth to stop believing in your cartoon globe model? So check this out. You can create a perfectly straight rainbow when it's reflecting off a straight piece of glass. Why are the rainbows we see outside in the sky shaped like that with a curve? We know that the Bible depicts a flat Earth with a dome or firmament over top. When we look to the Bible to see what the firmament is made out of, it tells us in Job 37, 18, Hast thou with them spread out the sky, which is strong, and as a molten looking glass? He confirms this furthermore in Revelations 15, 2, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on a sea of glass having harps of God. Back to the rainbow now it's common to see a double rainbow where there is an inverted rainbow on top of the other rainbow. Now this could only be possible if something is reflecting it which only means one thing God's glass firmament or dome. So the rainbows that you see outside not only confirm the shape, but also tells us that there's a glass firmament. Because how else would this be reflecting backwards like that? God bless. But it's not shrinking in a way that's visible or at all really perceivable. Scientists think it's shrunk. In a way that's not noticeable and not perceivable. Sounds like it gotta be assumed. And what does that mean for the earth, my dear? Since it supposedly have a magma core, did they switch it to oceans now? I can't remember. It was one of the two. It's been both. You know, it's kind of given that they don't know my love. But hypothetically speaking, it's a magma core. Is Earth shrinking? Are you sure maybe that that's not something that's just implemented to get us onto moon quakes and whatnot? Are you sure that they're not just running you by all these precautions and different stuff to make you feel like it's really feasible that they landed on the moon? That they finna build bases there and put humans on it. They gotta tell you things like we out here deflecting asteroids. You do know they have to sell you that bullshit in order to like keep up with the lie. They have to tell you that they making progress in all of these things so that you actually believe it. And that's the reason it's hitting mainstream and shit like that. New study showed my ass. Neil deGrasse Tyson says the sun only appears to be yellow or orange because of the atmosphere. And then I just started wondering, if that goes the case down, why every satellite image y'all send of the sun, or every time y'all show the sun in a satellite image, is always orange or yellow. Usually a fiery orange color. And also, why doesn't the atmosphere have the same effects on the stars that we see at night? Hmm? Huh? And if you're the type of person to say that the moon gets its light from the sun, then why does the moon appear white and the, and the sun doesn't? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, if they coming from the same source the lights coming from the same source shouldn't it be the same color or does like the atmosphere not do nothing for the for the light at night <laughs> and actually you don't even just see stars being white you be seeing them flicker all type of man if you be watching my video sometimes you see them change all type of crazy ass colors why the atmosphere doing that for them but not for the moon but don't tell me gases and how far away they are the shit you gotta assume hey, hey you you still think antarctica is a continent at the bottom of a globe? You haven't figured it out? It's an ice wall yet? Well, stick around. If you watch this whole thing, you might just figure it out. Let's first take a walk down memory lane back to 1957 when the Navy went to Antarctica and what did they find? A never ending, and I mean never ending ice wall. And I'm, I fast forward this thing here so you can just get an idea of it, but they're panning and panning and panning and flying a helicopter and panning and panning and they never get to the end because it is an ice wall that surrounds all the known lands. You see, these old maps used to show it. This is called the Hammond map from 1933, and you can research this self. And look, this is Antarctica down here, okay? They're not showing Antarctica as a continent at the bottom. They're showing Antarctica as an ice wall that surrounds us. This isn't the outline of the map. That's the outline of Antarctica. 
See, this is what NASA tells us Antarctica looks like, and to me, this looks like it could easily be CGI or something a kindergarten earth drew. And if you ever go on Google Maps or anything and try to do distances on this, it goes all haywire. You know why? Because Antarctica is an ice wall. And I don't claim to know what's outside of the ice wall. Maybe there is more land. I do believe there's a dome above us, and I think there's good evidence to support that. But I don't know. I don't know what's out here. It's all speculation. I think that this stuff could, there could be bigger and bigger domes. But like I said, it's all speculation. Like I said, I think there is some actual evidence that above our enclosed system is some sort of fluid. Maybe a superfluid, maybe it's just regular water. But this is called the lunar wave, and it's been captured dozens of times. And I think this, plus what I'm going to show you next with stars, is pretty good evidence that it's not infinite space above us, but some sort of fluid. So again, this is what a star looks like if you've never seen it, but it looks an awful lot like a pool light in water, like I said. Some evidence to support there's water above us. You guys, I really think it's about time you trade this in for that. You can't believe in the Bible and NASA at the same time. You're going to have to pick a side. If you believe in the Bible, you believe in flat earth. If you believe in NASA, you believe that we're on a ball that's floating around in outer space, right? So I kind of believe what the Bible says because I've always questioned why is the sky blue? And then you hear these things, oh, the molecules in the earth, the reflection of the ocean. I'm like, but listen, I'm trying to figure out the people who are living in the middle and middle America. Why is it that they see that the sky is blue? But they always try to give this long, drawn-out, educated, big words and all this other stuff. I think it's all a lie. So, just my two cents. What the Bible says, of course, Genesis 1, 6-10, it says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Now, what waters is he talking about? Well, he's talking about a firmament, but then you're talking about something solid, Right? overhead so what we actually see up there the reason why the sky is blue is because we are underwater so if you think about that tv show spongebob this is what it's like for us we're actually living inside of a bubble and so then it says and let the war and let it divide the waters from the waters meaning divide the waters from above from, from the waters that's below it says and god made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament so it's talking about again what i just said Firmament dividing the waters from above from that which is below. And then it says, uh, let's see, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Verse 8 And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. So this is where he's talking about earth. It says, and it was so. Verse 10, and God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of waters called the seas and God saw it was good. So then you have Genesis 7 through 11. Verse 11 says, in the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day of all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows were opened. So, when you think about the great deep, the wars of the great deep broken up, you kind of think about, you know, the depths of the waters that's here on earth. But then it says, and the windows of heaven were open. So, again, you heard in the previous verses where it was talking about the firmament and the, and the, uh, the great was above. So now you have Genesis 7 through 19, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the, it didn't say some of the hills, and all of the hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. All of the hills under that. Now you got to think what he's saying right here. Because the tallest mountain here on earth is the Himalayas, which is over 29,000 feet. So you got to ask yourself, if in fact there were a flood, a great flood, could the earth flood itself from its natural water resources that is here on earth it's impossible it had to have come from an outside source 
if there is evidence on earth that there was actually a flood. So something had to open in order to cover. Because you got to think the deepest valley or trenches here on earth is over 8,000 feet deep. So again, you either believe in the Bible or you believe in NASA who invented memory foam. <laughs> who invented, uh, I think, the dust buster. Right? So who are you going to believe? So when these guys say... Uh, uh, what was it? The moon's distance to the earth is 238,900 feet. They got it to the T, don't they? Them boys fooled us. Everything that you think you know, everything that you've been taught is a lie. So then it says, the earth from the sun, 91,602,000 miles. <laughs> Them boys got it. And here's the thing. Don't hate the player, I hate the game. Because, you know, some of these things are common sense, but especially nowadays, common sense just ain't that common. And we just don't think about it because when you actually, if you sun gaze or if you, you know, look at the moon close, it doesn't look that far away. You know, you see actual solid lines around the sun, the, the actual lines with the naked eye. Now, I'm gonna say don't do that because it can mess up the retina your retina and the same thing with the moon it doesn't look that far away so then it says and, and, and here's the deal all of these things that we see is inside the dome we're under a dome so then it says that venus is 25 million miles away <laughs> you know all you can do is laugh at this stuff when you think about it mars 215 million point uh 84 million miles 215 point 84 million miles. They got it down to T. Who measured this? Who walked this out? Who measured this? I love it. I love it. They got us. And who's control of it all? Ah, I don't know. Pick a side. NASA or the Bible? Who also invented water filters? But they go to the moon though, right? Yeah, okay. All right. The Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al-Biruni, and he lived from 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also of the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Eddie Allen Carr, known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Banjo. I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific Ocean where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tozy, a professional map maker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my store now and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.